Then there's the question of drinking water. Well, the oceans themselves were fresh water. And this is why oceans today are still getting saltier and have not yet reached equilibrium. Which would be obvious if the Earth was billions of years old that it would have reached by now. So even after the 40 days and nights of rain, which if they had collected none of it during that time, they would have still had ample drinking water from the ocean itself for the rest of their journey. But what about inbreeding, you might ask? Inbreeding is a problem, right? You can't just inbreed and repopulate the world. Well, inbreeding is not a problem at all, as long as species have the ability to grow in population size and spread out. You know, the exact same thing that God commanded mankind to do? Yep, that one. We have evidence of this in the animal kingdom from around the world, and even from the very oceans. When we look at whales, during a time when whaling was large and reduced the population down to just a few dozen, all the way to sheep and deer and birds, inbreeding was never a problem. Let's first look at sheep. We see in 1957, a single pair of mouflon sheep were left on one of the Kruligan Islands, near the Antarctic Circle. And in 1977, when they returned, the number had grown to 700 sheep. That's just 20 years stuck on a small island. And remember, male sheep are nomadic travelers by nature, so the conditions were not even favorable to them. And given the population size began with just two individuals, we know exactly when and how it happened. Evolution expected one thing based on evolution theory, and we expected another based on the biblical theory. Guess which one ended up being correct yet again? You guessed it, our model. But that's not all. Only five white-tailed deer were introduced in Finland in 1934 from North America. Four females and only one male. Their numbers rapidly increased, and the species is now one of the main wildlife species hunted in Finland. The population is completely isolated from North America, so testing their diversity on the new island was very easy, and in 2012 they were found to have populated so much that they are now the leading species in Finland, all from a single male and a few females. And then the next typical question comes along, but what about all the races of people alive today? How could we be related to Noah? Well, that's easy. Race is a label, not a scientific term. We know that all people are related to Noah, not based on race, not based on population growth or skin color, but because we all share the same Y chromosome as Noah. And when we look inside the Y chromosome, we see mutations that add up each and every generation. And if we rewind this clock back, we land right on Noah, who lived somewhere around 4,500 years or so ago, just like the Bible describes if you follow the genealogies back. What are the odds of that? 